Happy 2022, writers! I think I speak for everyone when I say we are excited about the clean slate of a brand new year, and I am super pumped to share with you guys my 2022 writer goals. I'll also show you how I use my goal setting workbook that I give to my patrons every year to not only set my goals, but also create a step by step game plan that outlines how I hope to accomplish them. If you want to see how this process worked for me last year, you can still check out my how I accomplished my 2021 goals video that I'll link down below. But let's get into the goals for this year. Like I mentioned in last week's video, I have been following an eight step process that I've realized basically breaks down into two stages. The first stage is actually setting the goals and this includes realizing that a lot of my goals actually live under one to three main category umbrellas then I set one main goal that I want to prioritize for each of those categories along with writing a why statement and this is so when I get to some part in the year where I'm like why did I set this goal this is too hard I can't do this I can go back to that why statement and remember why this goal is so important to me and finally within this stage is finding a few accountability buddies that I personally like to check in with on a weekly basis to make sure I'm making the progress I want to make. The second stage is the game plan. Whereas stage one is more of just picking what goals I want to accomplish, stage two is the how of actually how I'm going to get there. This includes setting tasks and different steps to actually get to each of one of my main goals by the end of the year, and then assigning those tasks to different quarters of the year, and then different months of the year, and then eventually getting to a place where I know each week what I'm going to do, which can also include setting up a time block schedule so I can make the most of every week. One thing I'm also doing this year is picking a word of the year, and I know a lot of people really enjoy doing this. I don't usually because I get so overwhelmed by all the options of all the different words I can pick. But as I was planning my goals for this year, one word was screaming at me and that was the word flexibility. And I chose this word because as a lot of you know, Ben and I are pregnant, we are having our first child, and we are so excited to be parents and to start this new adventure. But I also know it is going to flip my life and my expectations and my regular schedule totally upside down. So I've decided that from the get go, even though I love my goals, and I love my game plan, and I'm really excited about it. I've also told myself, hey, you're about to be a mom, a lot of things are going to change. And so be prepared to be flexible. One way I'm preparing to do this is using the tool notion. I did a video recently about all the features I really love about it and how flexible it really is. So if you're looking for a new productivity tool as well, you can definitely check that out. But I know I am super excited to use it again for this year because things are just going to keep changing. Speaking of my notion, this is actually the program that I've been planning my 2022 goals. So I figured I would just take you into the pages where I've done the planning so you can see it for yourself. Over here, we have my first kind of brainstorm for my 2022 goals. This is the final that I'll show you in a second. But then I've broken down the tasks, as you'll see in this outline, into a quarterly plan and then a monthly plan. Let's start here though. So we can talk about my overall goals. You can see my word of the year here, so don't forget that. And then the two main categories that I've organized my writer goals into. The first category being my books, which includes writing and publishing. And the second category being the business side of my writer life, which includes selling the books, side hustles, and growing my platform. Like I mentioned before, for each category, I try to pick just one main goal for the year. And I do a bunch of other things throughout the year, but I try to pick one priority. This year, however, However, since I've been published, I feel like I have two different focuses for this category. The first being my published books or my backlist, and the goal being to find the most effective ways to keep growing my readership and fandom for those books, which would be my current series of On Wings of Ash and Dust. More specifically, this year, I'm going to be releasing the paperback version of On Wings of Ash and Dust, which has all of the episodes in one physical book. And that's basically a no-brainer because it is happening at the end of this month. I'm so excited. Tuesday, January 20th. 25th, put it in your calendars. It is coming. And this was important for me because I know I have a lot of potential readers that have been waiting for more of a physical copy of my book rather than just the ebooks that were released last year. And for all of those people like me who love audiobooks, I definitely want to start working on an audiobook as well. And then to promote all of the different formats I have my current books in, I really want to learn how to do ads. I've been really focusing on organic marketing since I published my books, but I would really love to learn this as well so I can market my books 
even more. The second part of this goal is for new books because I always wanna keep creating new stories that I love. More specifically, I made this note for myself just saying that I'd love to say I could publish a brand new book this year in addition to the paperback of On Wings of Ash and Dust, but with adjusting to having a baby this June, I'm not sure that will happen. So I decided to make good, better, best goals for this one. My good goal being to get the next serial I'm working on all the way to draft two, and this would be sometime before I work with beta readers. This is sort of the non-negotiable that I would at least love to get to this stage for this goal. The better goal is to get that serial to the actual beta reading stage. And my best goal and kind of like my reach goal is to get the serial all the way to draft three, where I'll be applying beta reader feedback. Like I mentioned, I also try to write a why statement for each of my goals. And the one for the category of books is I wanna keep building on the momentum I've started with and dust, continue with sell through and building the fandom. But I also never want to stop creating new stories as I also learn how to be a good mom and a better wife and friend. Then we get into the game plan or the how, the steps or subtasks I plan to take in order to actually attain this goal this year. And I also wanted to write this statement here because whereas the goals probably won't change throughout the year, the game plan has more flexibility to change over time to better serve the main goal. So let's start with my actual published books on Wings of Ash and Dust. And here I'll just show you some of the tasks I've brainstormed to actually get me to this point of publishing. In January this month, I want to do a lot of fun release things that I already have all planned out on another Notions page in detail. I want to kick all of this off with a cover reveal and an unboxing video that I filmed. And that's actually going to be happening next week. So I just want to let you guys know that if you're excited to see the cover earlier than everybody else and you'd like to help me promote the cover like on Instagram and other platforms, I've created a cover reveal team sign up that you can check out in the description down below. I would love to have a ton of you on this team if you're interested. And the last thing here is I also really want to do an in-person release party and signing because I have lots of local family and friends that are really excited about the paperback coming out and wanting to celebrate with me in person since we didn't really do that for the ebook coming out. So these are my steps for that part of this goal. I also want to start the creation process of the Ash and Dust audiobook. So that includes maybe researching creation avenues. There's a bunch of different ways you can create audiobooks and different services you can look into. So I want to start looking into that. I want to research narrators and different prices. And then eventually I will hire a narrator. I also have this note because I've had thoughts about actually recording it myself. First of all, to save a bunch of money because aud creating audiobooks is really expensive but also because I think it might be a lot of fun, especially because I have experience doing dramatic readings and acting. So we'll see what happens because overall, I think it would just be so amazing to have a narrator that I love do all the voices. And anyway, I'll keep you guys updated. And then for some categories, I have what I'm calling reach goals. And this one is just if I get farther in this process and actually start recording the audiobook or miraculously somehow get it out this year, that would be great. But these are really the priorities. Finally, for published books, I want to better learn how to promote my backlist. And so I want to develop an ad and maybe promo and deal site strategy, which might include taking some courses to really learn more about how to do this. I've also started a reader focused TikTok link Lately, and I've just heard how much success some authors are having in marketing and selling their books over there. So I figured that's a free way that I can market my books and potentially have a lot of fun because TikTok is pretty fun. Under this category, I also said I'd love to grow in friendships and networking with other published YA fantasy authors like myself, maybe do collabs and newsletter swaps, etc. So if you are a published YA fantasy author, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to connect with you. Oh, and here's another reach goal, which is actually more of something I don't have control over, but I would love to see the first episode and the paperback that's coming out get to 200 reviews over on Amazon. So if you have read episode one or you get to read the paperback this year, if you would write a review over on Amazon, that would make my year. Okay, now let's close this up and go to new books, which is really fun because I am working on the sequel for Ash and Dust, which would also be a serial and then become a physical book. But a lot of you also might recognize this name, Sisters of the Shadowwood, which is a serial I started plotting live here not last year, but the year before. And I'm still really excited about this project. So I'd love to make some kind of progress with this story as well. Overall though, like I said, I have good, better, best goals for this. So I want to get a new serial, either the sequel of Ash and Dust or Sisters in the Shadowwood into the editing stage, AKA draft two, which means I need to finish outlining. 
I would love to write a synopsis and get feedback from my critique partners on that synopsis before I start drafting. And I did a whole video about why it can be really effective to actually write a synopsis and get feedback on it before you start drafting. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that below. But then with their feedback, I'd start writing my fast draft, get feedback on that draft, and then start writing draft two, which would really be when I start digging into the full on editing stage. Now, if I get to my better goal of getting to the beta reader stage, then I'll be sending draft two to beta readers and making a plan of how to edit and get to draft three from their feedback. And then the ultimate kind of best goal would be to get to the point where I'm editing with beta reader feedback. I'm also including a reading goal in here. This year, I just about met my goal of reading 30 books in a year. So I'd like to stretch myself a little bit and maybe read 40 and then also track what I'm learning from reading each of these books as a writer, which I might end up sharing some of that stuff on YouTube and TikTok if you guys are interested in that. So let me know. And if you'd like to see what I end up reading this year, you can always follow me over on Goodreads. Now, the last part of each category is not just to brainstorm tasks, but then figure out when in the world I'm actually going to get them done. So that's when I assign each of the tasks to quarterly, monthly, and weekly tasks. For example, with the new books I'll be working on, I have these steps, but now I have to figure out, okay, which months am I actually going to outline? Or is that just going to take a couple weeks? Maybe I can do both of these things in one month. And then the next month, write my first draft. And by the second month, start getting feedback and working on draft two. Also keeping into account that this is not my only goal. So there might be some months that I have to take a break from this process so I can focus on getting other things done. And this is something I went into a lot of detail with some of my upper tier patrons recently when we did kind of a goal setting workshop. So if you want to see how I practically break down all of these steps into different months of the year, etc., I'll link that video down below. Or if you're still in the midst of just trying to plan out your goals for this year, I also offer a goal setting workbook for the year that all of my patrons at any tier get. So I'll link that down below too if you haven't already checked it out. Now we get to category two, which is all about my business goal. And overall for this goal, I really want to reevaluate and restructure my business model to accomplish these things. One, balance the priority of reaching my ideal readers more, gradually making selling books more of a main source of income, along with continuing to serve writers in a way that gives me life and that is both manageable and sustainable while being pregnant. My why statement for this goal is with some aspects of the business side of things, I've been feeling kind of stagnant and in a rut. Plus, I really want to write and read more and grow my readership. And I still want to serve writers, but I need to find a better balance, especially with a baby on the way. So let's take a quick look at the game plan for this. Overall, I made this statement the main reminder for this goal because I think it's easy to get stuck in a place where you're constantly focusing on growth and quantity, but I'm fairly happy with how I've grown the business side of things the last few years. And what I really want to do now is make sure I'm focusing on quality and that everything I'm doing is really aligned with who I am, what I want, and making the best use of my time. These are all the things that comprise the business side of my writer life. So we'll just go through this real quick. For my books, I want to set a book income goal to make a certain amount of money on my books and book related things like merch every month. I want to learn how to do ads and promo and deal sites, like I said before, and also collaborate with other fantasy authors and fantasy book subscription boxes maybe or promoters. Then for Patreon, I want to look at restructuring and optimizing the tiers I have to help writers even better make the best use of my time. This might include possibly adding a tier or focus for fantasy writers since that's what I am and I love talking about all things fantasy writing. Then for this acronym right here, AWBC, it stands for my author website bootcamp where I teach authors how to create a website and newsletter that grows their readership and their author platform. And I just made a note for myself that usually when I promote this course, I make the most money with it. Plus it's passive because it's already created, but it does need to be updated. And I've been wanting to do this for a while. So I really want to make a plan to update and simplify the course, re-record some of the videos. And even though the course is pretty much self-study right now, you can take it anytime at your own convenience. I really love running the course live. And I think my students get their websites and newsletters done much faster when I do it along with them. So I should really mark this as a reach goal, but I'd love to run this course live with my students maybe one to three times this year 
newsletter. My goal is to have about 30 students each time. Then for my newsletter, I really want to focus on getting even more engaged subscribers and not just focusing on my subscriber count. This includes increasing my normal newsletter open rate and click-through rate. And I've also set up a tracker page to track this every month along with growth and progress on every other platform. I also want to focus on gaining more subscribers that are super interested in the types of books that I'm actually coming out with now, which is great. And I've thought about making maybe a completely separate list or newsletter just for them, which I've started to experiment with. So we'll see what happens here. Then overall for social media, I want to make content that gives writers value like I have been doing, but continue to add more and more of a focus on connecting with my ideal readers. The main social media platforms I've been focusing on lately is YouTube and Instagram. So I have a few ideas about how to gain a higher focus on my readers by either creating a separate YouTube channel slash Instagram for my readers, which this is kind of inspired by Sarah Cannon, who does this really well, or keep working to find a way to serve both writers and readers on my current platforms. So for example, for fantasy readers, but also readers who are writers, I could do book recs for those genres or share what I'm learning from reading those types of books or even sharing Save the Cat outlines that I'm making of the books that I'm reading. If any of that sounds really exciting to you, please let me know. And like I mentioned before, there is also TikTok where I could really focus on readers more and kind of leave my current YouTube and Instagram more focused on writers. On TikTok, I'd really like to find my niche on there, the kind of bookish content that people would like from me the most to help promote my books. And I've heard that, especially in the beginning, if you try posting three times a day, this should really say one week, not two for a little experiment I want to do. This is an experiment that I'd like to try over there to see if I can really gain some more traction. And then after posting a lot, maybe pulling back to maybe three times a week or once a day. For actual YouTube content, I would still like to create four videos a month, but streamline my YouTube process. So I'm taking less time for my actual writing. One idea was to create a cycle of different kinds of videos that I put out every month. So I'm not married to this plan, but this was an idea of maybe doing one pre-recorded tips video that's definitely more of the educational writer side. Maybe doing one interactive live stream because I haven't done a lot of those lately and I do miss it. And I was thinking of maybe bringing back my series that I was doing, which was a plan with me series where every month I come on and I talk about my goals and I hear about your guys' goals, how they went the previous month and the goals we're setting for the next month. The third type of video I could put in the mix is a highlights video, which takes one of my longer live streams and cuts it down to the most important 10 to 15 minutes because a lot of people have said, hey, the content of your live streams looks really good, but I don't have an hour plus in my life to actually listen to it. So I think I might sprinkle these in every once in a while, which would definitely make those weeks easier for me and I could focus more on writing on those weeks. And I'm also thinking about maybe vlogging, although vlogging can definitely take more time than making a normal pre-recorded video, but I definitely like to experiment with it. And if you guys would like to see more vlogs from me, definitely let me know that in the comments. Like I hinted at before, I did start a tracking page to track my income and growth of all of these platforms. So every month I want to go in there and update that. And then a reach goal that's definitely not priority, but I might dig back into Pinterest because I did see a ton of success when I was being really active over there. So my steps for this was to get back to posting blog posts of my YouTube videos and other content I'm sharing and also learning how to not just promote my writer content, but also promote my books over on Pinterest because I know that's things that authors do as well. But to close things up, I also wanted to to mention just a couple of things I want to add to my process this year. I think just like I do a kind of wrap up and review of my full year every year, like I did in this video, I think on my own, I want to do mini reviews for myself every week and every month and every quarter, recording what I can be most grateful for, what I accomplished, what I learned, and what kind of things I need to adjust, what things aren't working. So not only things I should start doing, but what things I should maybe stop doing. I also want to get back to tracking my time again. For a while, I was really good about this with my Google Calendar. But this past year, especially with publishing, I got totally off track. But it was always really helpful to be able to tell where my time was actually going every day. If you want to learn more about how I do this, you can check out this video where I showed how I create a time blocking schedule. The third thing is focusing on creating systems and routines over just setting goals and like a plan. I recently watched a YouTube video that was talking all about this idea. And it was really interesting and helpful. And I won't go into all the details now because I think this video is getting 
taking a little long, but I'll link that video down below too if that sounds like something you might have to also reframe your brain about. And finally, this year, I definitely have to plan maternity leave. I know my friend and fellow author tuber Bethany planned three months for herself, so I'm thinking that's probably what I'm gonna do too. And so in my yearly plan with my quarterly and monthly to-dos, I've blocked out three months for this and then planned all these other tasks around that maternity leave time. Well, I'm pretty excited about my plan for this year, but now I'd love to hear about your top goals in the comments. If you still need help setting up your goals or coming up with a practical game plan, remember you can still grab my workbook by joining my Patreon at any tier. And if you're excited to see me accomplish one of my main goals this month of publishing my first paperback novel and getting all the behind the scenes goodness, definitely make sure you're subscribed. And until then, you can learn even more about goals setting in one of these two videos and I'll see you there. Hey.